I'm Heidi Godman. Parkinson disease affects thousands of people here on the Sun Coast, but now there's help. A state-of-the-art procedure called DBS, deep brain stimulation. Here now is the story of a Sarasota County woman who had the procedure and how she made the decision to gain more control of her life. Chris Ludwig says everyday tasks like making a cup of tea and putting on her makeup are a challenge. Chris has Parkinson's disease, a degenerative neurological disorder causing muscle freezing, tremors, and many other debilitating symptoms. Chris says it wasn't an easy diagnosis to accept. She leaned on her husband of 44 years. I really had, in retrospect, kind of a tough time with it. I came back and, of course, told Dale, my husband, and we talked about it for a long time and realized that uh, I, my reaction to this was that it would be something that would be our secret and I wouldn't have to tell people about it. Neurologist Dean Sutherland treats Chris for Parkinson's disease. He says denial is something many patients experience when first hearing the news. Chris went through the typical stages that you would see almost with any other disease stage. She had fear, shame, denial, and eventually acceptance. I was, um, I think, going through depression and didn't realize it uh, during that period immediately after I got the Parkinson's diagnosis. But soon the 67 year old decided to take control. She began a strict exercise routine. I exercise in the exercise room sometimes. Um, we kayak. Uh, I'm, I'm very active and I haven't had to give any of that up. Most specialists now uh, think that exercise is probably just as important as any of the medications that we can give people. Chris also used writing as an outlet for her feelings, although it wasn't easy to get the words down. Her Parkinson's symptoms forcing her to type with just one finger. Well, Parkinson's disease is extremely complicated, especially as time goes by and the disease progresses. So patients need not just a simple approach with medications and other aspects, they need a holistic approach and up-to-date information. But eventually, Chris started wanting more than medicine and exercise to treat her disease. She began researching deep brain stimulation. Deep brain stimulation involves insertion of a stiff wire electrode into the deepest parts of the brain, allowing doctors to send electrical impulses to the very small areas of the brain that are involved in Parkinson's disease. The stimulating impulses are controlled by a small pacemaker implanted under the skin just below the collarbone. The pacemaker is then programmed by a doctor for maximum effectiveness. Ideal candidates for this surgery are those who respond well to Parkinson medications but are experiencing side effects from these same medications, such as abnormal movement. As with any brain surgery, DBS carries the risk of bleeding, infection, seizures or stroke, although this risk is small. Afterwards, some patients experience depression, slowed thought process, memory problems, or a lack of improvement. Although the surgery is usually performed on patients with much more advanced symptoms, Sutherland believed Chris would be a candidate for DBS. Over time, it's been shown that people with moderate disease who still have the complications of the medication may actually do better in the long run, especially if they're in a younger age group. Sutherland felt Chris would be a good candidate because she was feeling side effects of the medication. The medications aren't lasting as long. They're wearing off more quickly. So she is right at the exact point where I think that she would benefit the most from a deep brain stimulator. Candidates are assessed for physical qualifications as well as psychological. Chris wasn't looking for a miracle cure, but hoping to reduce the amount of her medication and lessen the side effects, giving her more control of her life. This, I think, is going to buy me some time, and that's kind of what I'm looking for with it. And so Chris went through with the surgery. I was awake for a, a part of the operation and, and remember it too. And there was obviously not any pain, um, but it was interesting to look around the room and to hear what was going on. Um, and then they put me back out again. The surgery itself takes about an hour, but an overnight hospital stay is required. The next day I was out of there. So, and I was up and walking and talking and the only thing I was was tired. The changes came quickly. First, her tremor. Most people pay attention to the tremor and they notice that the tremor is not there for a lot of the time. I mean, it, is, it comes back and we're still trying to figure out the medication and, and that kind of thing. So it's not like I'm tremor free. But Chris has also noticed an improvement in her cognitive behavior, like her concentration and her focus. Dale also notices that. The other thing that I noticed is that uh, some time ago uh, she had suggested that I go and think about getting a hearing aid and since she had the operation I don't need it anymore. 
Dale also says Chris has more expression in her face, no more mask of Parkinson. There is a, there is a look that she has that is much more communicative than it ever was for a very long time. Chris is happy she decided to get the surgery, and she looks forward to future advancements in medicine. This ability uh, or belief that this is going to make things easier, that it's going to buy some time, and uh, science may catch up with us, um, it's just wonderful. It's a good feeling. And the couple agree humor and staying positive are vital to living with Parkinson disease for the patient and the caregiver. It's a choice you make. Every turn, every step, how you look at things. Whether you want to look at life and say that you've been given an opportunity to see that there are positive things that are going on. You need to, you need to make that decision. If you'd like more information about DBS or about the many Parkinson resources available here in our community or to make a contribution, contact NeuroChallenge Foundation. So click on the website at neurochallenge.org.